All right, all right, all right. Back where we belong and fresh new digs to boot. Systems nominal, interlocks activated, dynatherms connected, infracells up, mega thrusters are go. Are you sure we need to summon the big guy for this? Well, somebody's got to talk some sense into you know who. And it's as good a place as any to start the new series. Works for me. All right, fire it up, chief. I am the Game Overthinker, cosmic being from above time and beyond space. I am summoned hence to this mortal plane to impart unto the world of gaming the guidance of eternal truth and the wisdom of the ages. Steal thyself, that you might hear my voice and heed these words. Nintendo. The fuck is wrong with you? Nintendo, we have to have a talk. Not because we're mad at you, although it may sound like that, and not because we hate you, that's crazy. You're Nintendo, people love you. But lately, lately you've been screwing up bad, old friend. And just so we're clear, by lately, I mean recently. This isn't one of those rants where I'm gonna act like everything you did since the GameCube has been shit, because it hasn't. And I'm not looking to dredge up old, tired grievances like how you should've gone with CDs for the N64, or you should've kept the deal with Sony instead of screwing them over for that bullshit CDI partnership, because hindsight is 2020. And this isn't even one of those things where I chew you out for not doing a new Star Fox, or a new F-Zero, or releasing the English translation of all the Mother games. Although seriously, you really do need to do a new Star Fox, a new F-Zero, and release the English translations of the other Mother games. Thank you. No, this is about the here and now, Nintendo, but the fact that I have to specify that is kind of part of the problem. The thing is, you guys used to be Teflon. Even when you'd blow it, they couldn't touch you. Oh, the Virtual Boy failed? Too bad, I guess we'll have to settle for utterly dominating handhelds for the next two decades. Everyone told you the Wii wasn't gonna work, you turned it into one of your biggest success stories since the NES. Hell, the only thing that held that sucker back from being an even bigger hit than it was were the third parties punking out on it. Oh man, porting to a slightly different interface? That sounds like work. The other two guys don't even ask us to make the sequels all that different. 3DS started slow for a little bit, but it's been kicking ass ever since. But lately, bad news all around. Not necessarily business-wise, you're doing okay, but in the one area that never used to be a problem for you. You're making it harder and harder for us to like you. The Wii U had a soft launch, and thus far your response has been, eh, just keep doing what we're doing, things will work out. You're still tethering most digital purchases to hardware instead of an account system like this is 2002, which makes a lot of people think twice about buying anything from what's otherwise a pretty robust digital storefront. You either somehow didn't anticipate how hard the Amiibos were going to hit, or you did and are artificially manipulating supply lines, so take your pick. Are you being clueless or dishonest? And your relationship with the YouTube and Let's Play communities is, well, I don't need to say it because Angry Joe already did. It's bullshit. Claiming copyright is bullshit. It, the creator program is bullshit, and not doing a subspace emissary follow-up because you're mad that people uploaded the cutscenes is seriously bullshit. With all due respect, sir, I think you're the only person who actually cares that there wasn't an elaborate fan service platformer in the new Smash Brothers. Silence! Some of us still care about the single-player experience. I'm just saying. And besides, it ties into the broader issue that seems to be at the heart of all of Nintendo's recent bad decision-making. Nintendo, simply put, and I never thought I'd say this, especially not as a criticism, you're stuck in the past. Now seriously, I get how counterintuitive that sounds, people. A deep connection to history and roots has always been key to Nintendo's ability to thrive even in the most dire of circumstances. While other game companies postured, posed, and chased every new trend and passing fad, they stuck to core principles and a deeply felt sense of cultural history. Before video games were even an idea, Nintendo was a toy company, and as such, they understand far better than any 90s also-rans or 21st century bandwagon jumpers that the soul, nay the spirit animal of game creation, isn't the do shoveling corporate feedback or the twee indie scenesters nor is it the self-hating wannabe filmmaker or self-aggrandizing would-be auteur. Oh, we're gonna get letters for this one. Or the party-pooping grumpy Gus who clearly checked out a long time ago, or the military-industrial propagandist. So many letters. No, the spirit animal of game creation is the toy maker. 
But even the toy maker has to adapt once in a while. Now, Nintendo, you may have been around 126 years, but you've only been primarily a toy maker since about the 60s. Lego has been around since like 1932. Look how well they've adapted to a changing world. Yeah, where's your movie? Oh, that's right, you don't have any movies because you had one shitty experience and said to hell with it. Except now, for some reason, you're okay farming shit out to Adam Sandler? Donkey Kong. Seriously, what the fuck? Look, a sense of history and a reluctance to completely abandon tried and true methods is not only understandable, it's commendable in a world that every day seems to respect history less and less. But Nintendo, you have to stop acting and thinking like a regional outfit. You're not anymore, and you haven't been for a long time. You're international, global even, and that globe isn't called Planet Kyoto. Just because you wisely don't ruin your immortal franchises and time-tested beloved characters by chasing every stupid gaming trend like some developers do, doesn't mean you can't get with the times in other respects. The YouTube stuff is the most baffling. Yes, technically copyright law is murky enough that there isn't a hard and fast rule about whether Let's Plays qualify as transformative works protected under fair use. I think they do, and I think the law will eventually skew that way, but you've also gone after reviewers and critics and commentators. That's journalism, and that is protected. And even if it weren't, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, especially when it's not in your long-term interest. Look, I get how it might sound like the same quote-unquote infringement on paper, and believe me, I understand that these decisions are ultimately being made by an aging family board of directors dynasty so resistant to change they might as well be a church. Believe me, I was raised Catholic. I sympathize. But a person posting a Let's Play of Mario Party 10 is just not the same thing as some asshole calling his plumbing business Mario Brothers Plumbing. It's not like you produce your own Let's Plays and the amateur ones are taking away from it. There's been no proof that a superabundance of Let's Play videos has ever negatively impacted a game's sales. In fact, what proof there is seems to point in the exact opposite direction. Or do you think a one-gag premise like Night Trap but in a Chuck E. Cheese gets two sequels and a movie. No, seriously, somebody thinks Five Nights at Freddy's needs to be a movie without the enthusiastic cult following it built up through the Let's Play community. Right now, YouTube is Napster, you're acting like Lars Ulrich, and you're gonna end up like Tower Records, and Sam Goody, and the entire record industry, pretty much. You don't want that. Even setting aside what it means for you economically, you do not come out of this looking good. At all. When the dust settles on this whole fracas, people like Angry Joe and Jim Sterling and me and everyone else who called you out on this are going to be remembered by gaming history as being in the right. Well, you're going to have the biggest black mark on your good name since the censored version of Mortal Kombat. And about the amiibo availability situation. Look, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a supply and demand economics expert, but I do think I kind of know enough to get the sense that mid-scale action figures with microchips in them should be easier to acquire, slightly, than, say, Sierra Leone conflict diamonds. Well, that was a dark place to take it. What about Taya Leone? I mean, Disney Infinity doesn't seem to have this problem. Neither does Skylanders. I know y'all don't seem to care about the world outside the borders of your Kyoto headquarters, but I'm pretty sure you got people who do earnings reports and sales projections, right? Again, it's a different world now. Gaming is not niche anymore, and your stable of characters and franchises aren't known and beloved to just that niche. You must have at least had a sense that Amiibos were going to be huge, right? And that's the sad part, Nintendo. It's not just that you've spent the better part of this still young, to be fair, console generation tripping over your own feet, it's that you should be kicking ass right now. Forget running equal to Microsoft and Sony or even just hanging in there, you should be running this shit. Right now, the games industry, particularly on the console side, is basically Anna Nicole Smith circa 2003 or so. It's got a shit ton of money coming in, but nobody thinks it's in a healthy state of being long term. Everything is getting more bloated, harder to produce, and way too damn expensive. There's only a handful of major AAA franchises selling well enough to prop up the rest of it. There's a fucking civil war going on between the video game versions of the Sad Puppies and or Stormfront and basically everyone else who just wants to also be here. The audience is spending more but not actually growing and in no way sustainably. One or two more high-profile clusterfucks like Assassin's Creed Unity, and we're heading for something similar to a crash. And in case you forgot, the last time Western gaming drove the whole damn medium off a cliff, it worked out pretty well for you, and then for the rest of us. So yeah, gaming's shining cities on the hill, at least as far as the late 90s and early 2000s were concerned, are now creatively stagnant and uh, financially precarious. But have you looked at the realms where that's not the case? Now, I'm not going to sit here and write a love letter to the mobile gaming app business. There's some undeniable shadiness going on there with the freemium, free-to-play crap and universal standards. Forget about it. But you know what else is undeniable? Mobile was a goddamn full-blown gold rush for a good long stretch, and it's still making money hand over fist. What kind of money? Try We Can Afford Kate Upton bathing for a commercial money. Do you want to come and play? 
Meanwhile, independent gaming is in perhaps the best place it's ever been creatively. New platforms and emerging markets have enabled the indie scene to grow exponentially, and talented young designers with fresh new visions are pouring in almost faster than the real estate can open up. Indie gaming right now is the place where the interesting, visionary, boundary-pushing, thought-provoking, stimulating, challenging, vibrant, creative, artistic energy is concentrating in the video game medium. Now please consider, what do these two edges of the gaming medium have in common? Huh. Seeing a lot of classical, pared-down design, colorful characters, imaginative, wildly varied settings and tones, a wide net being cast in terms of appeal, i.e. not just aiming for angry guys in their 20s, and a lot, and I mean a lot, of deliberate evocation of aesthetic and mechanical sensibilities lovingly borrowed from the golden age of gaming, the medium's last great explosion of unbridled creative energy. And Nintendo, you pretty much were that golden age, and to a powerful degree, you're very much the last true vanguard carrying it into modernity. Mobile and indie gaming, respect the most financially and artistically vibrant scenes in video games today have both concluded that emulating the lumbering bloat of the increasingly misnamed AAA scene is a path not worth their time following. Instead, they're chasing your path. They aspire to you. Very nearly all the stuff that mobiles are making a fortune on and indies are racking up awards for is being built on foundations you either created, published, nurtured, or lived through. The best hope for the future of gaming is in a very real sense following your lead. So why aren't you leading? Why aren't you out in front of a gaming revolution that has embraced your tactics and flies your colors? Why aren't you embracing a gaming future that has already so completely embraced you? Why instead are you digging a trench backwards into history? Why does the eShop run barely more intuitively than the Sega channel? Why does it seem like you're resisting Amiibo becoming an eponymous brand extension like Lego's Toys to Life thing is surely going to be? Why are you overpricing and staggering the digital releases of classics when Netflix-style access to the archives of our shared gaming history would benefit almost no one more than it would you? Why are you jerking YouTubers and the rest of the new games media around when almost all of them seem to want to do nothing but celebrate you? The stars ain't gonna get much more aligned than they are right now, Nintendo. Know, the stage is set, the future of video games is now, and whether they know it or not, the assembled citizenry of the gaming kingdom is all but begging you to sit on the throne. But to sit on that throne, to do that first, you'll have to pull your head out of your own ass. Damn. Well, that was... descriptive. The Game Overthinker has spoken.